Glad you can be with us at St. Colin Ballas on this Thursday, the 21st of May, 2020. It's Ascension Day. Whether you're a member of our own church family or you've simply found us online, a warm Bally home welcome. And a special hello today, please, to two new friends from Wolverhampton who stumbled on our first service online at the beginning of March, and they've been watching us ever since. So, really glad to have you, and thank you for getting in touch to tell me that you were with us in spirit and in prayer across the miles over these strange weeks. How lovely to be connected in Christian fellowship with you. Well, today begins 10 days of prayer for Down and Drumore. It's led by David McClay, our bishop, and it'll culminate in a sermon he will preach to all 75 parishes in our diocese online on Pentecost Sunday, the 31st of May. For this special Ascension Day service, recorded and edited by, as ever, our own youth worker, Andrew Watson, it's great to have the Reverend Jan with us, our community pastor. She will be reading, preaching, and praying. And over the next number of days, Jan will also be doing everything that she can to guide and facilitate our church family as we pray together through the 10 days. Of many things that I missed sharply this Holy Week past, one was Holy Communion. Our own Wednesday communion, of course, up in the parish center, and then our communion lunch, which would have taken place that week. Our home communion visits, Jan and I would have visited probably uh, 40 uh, plus homes with communion before Easter. Monday, Thursday, a, a great and moving highlight of every church year for every believer and personally poignant for every clergy person that I know. And then, of course, supremely Easter morning, meeting the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread, the day of resurrection itself, all of those things I missed terribly, and I know you did too, very many of you. So, given our lockdown circumstances, there is a line of Jesus in St. Luke's version of the Last Supper that I have been turning over in my mind, and I identify with it, I think, in a whole new way, given our current situation. And it's these words, I have eagerly desired, says the Lord to His friends, the disciples, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. As I celebrate here and as you follow and join and pray at home, ask yourself, please, today, have the words of the Lord in this service of the Lord ever come as directly into your homes and the heart of your homes as they are about to now? Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 16, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love You and worthily magnify Your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these, your laws, in our hearts. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. And let's confess silently to the Lord our sins together now in the stillness of His house. God our Father, You exalted Your Son to sit at Your right hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, You are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, Counselor, You are sent to be with us forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray the collect for the Ascension Day. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe Your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend, and with Him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And John will now lead the ministry of the Word. Our first our first reading is written in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. And our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 45. Then he opened their minds to, so they could understand the scriptures. Jesus told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem 
with great joy. As, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence with us. And Lord, I ask that you would use my words today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everyone. Wanted to just ask you how you're doing. Wanted to ask you how you're doing in your head and how you're doing really in your heart. This is a time where I'm sure many of you have been asking big questions. Questions like, where is God in the midst of this pandemic? What is it right to pray for? What can I believe for? And so I wanted to encourage you by looking at the story of Jesus ascending into heaven and of actually being seated at the right hand with his Father, because it makes a huge difference knowing that Jesus is praying for us at this time. I was greatly helped in thinking about what is going on in our world by the VE Day celebrations that happened recently. Because in a sense, you could draw something out of that. World War II was a horrific time, a time where evil forces were evident in our world, and a time where war was waged to stop Nazism, really, and all the dreadfulness that was coming out of that. But where was the church in the midst of that battle? What was God doing in the midst of that battle? And so I'd like to show you the book I'm reading at the moment. I'm actually, actually reading Reese Howell's Intercessor by Norman Grubb, and speaking about the, the Battle of Britain and the Day of Prayer, this is what Air Chief Marshal Lord Downing commander-in-chief of flight command during the Battle of Britain said, at the end of the battle, one had the sort of feeling that there had been some special divine intervention to alter some sequence of events which would otherwise have occurred. And so prayer was seen to have been um, made a difference during that time. Ascension Thursday, which is what we're celebrating this evening, is a display of God's power as Jesus ascends into heaven and where we're told he puts all enemies under the feet of Jesus. It's in two parts because it starts at the resurrection where we see God raising Jesus and where we're told that he has triumphed over death. The second part is where he ascends into heaven and we're told he triumphs over evil powers. Ephesians in verse 19 says this, that power is like the working of God's mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. In this passage in Ephesians, I want to draw out three quick points. Firstly, Jesus has broken the power of sin, and I believe sickness and death. Secondly, when we come under that power, we, when we come under Jesus, we can exercise the same power. And thirdly, I believe at this time, God wants us to pray for sickness and death and the coronavirus to end and to be defeated. After 40 days, Jesus takes his disciples out to a hill to watch him ascend. There was many public, many eyewitnesses to what was a public event, a public display of God's power. We didn't see the resurrection happening, but actually many people saw the ascension happening. And I would have loved to have been there to watch Jesus rise up. And I actually think, what did they say to, what did he say to prepare them? Because as you saw the Lord Jesus start to move up, I can't imagine what you must have felt. 
I would have kind of, I, I don't know whether I'd have flung myself at Jesus and tried to pull him back down because, but he had them prepared, so they didn't. They stood and they watched and up he rose, up, up, up. And we're told he was hidden by the clouds and they were still standing there staring into the sky when two angels were told in the account in Acts came and said, why are you staring into the sky? And then they answered the question because they knew, and they said, that same Jesus will come back the same way. And so it was a tremendous display of God's power, watching Jesus ascend into heaven. And then Jesus said this to them before he ascended, stay in the city until you've been clothed in power from on high. And so he tells them to wait, to pray. And so for 10 days, the church obeyed and they prayed. And then on Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit came. Bishop Davis has asked us to watch and pray for the next 10 days. And when you go on the diocesan website, you will find different focuses for prayer for all of these 10 days. We're going to be praying for youth. We're going to be praying for the women. Um, we're going to be praying for our community, for men, for families. Um, there's going to be a worship rooms online. And so please uh, look at the diocesan website every day and see what's happening on those days. God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. And this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 26. Jesus must reign until all his enemies are put under his feet, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Death is God's enemy, as much as it is yours and mine. And so it is right to pray for the defeat of this virus. Paul also prays that our eyes may be opened and that we may see the power that is given to us in Jesus as we pray. That's my second point. Ephesians 2 and 6. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. This verse is tremendously important because we are told that we can go into the throne room of heaven when we pray by the power of Jesus. And so sometimes when I'm praying, I actually close my eyes and I picture myself in the throne room. I find it very difficult, but what it does is it brings me into the presence of God and helps me to remember that the things I asked for are being heard. It changes the tone of my prayer completely. I'm not on my sofa at home. I'm actually beside Jesus in heaven. And so I would encourage you to do that because that's what we've been given. We've been given power in prayer. And so my third point, it's right to pray for the church as we come out of lockdown. It's right to pray for a vaccine to be found or for a cure to be found I was listening to our politicians recently, and what they were talking about is the new normal and how we're going to have to live with this virus for a long time to come. And I believe it was the Holy Spirit in my heart said, you know, it's right to pray that we don't have to live with this virus for a long time to come. It's right as the church that we actually rise up, claim the power that is ours as we go into the heavenly places because Jesus ascended and actually wants to bring us up there too. And so we pray for this virus to end. We pray for our church to be strengthened, not weakened. We pray for the next 10 days that Pentecost would mean that power comes on the church and that as we go out to our communities, as we speak to our neighbors, as we offer help and maybe a prayer, that it makes a huge difference in ordinary people's lives because that's the power that God has given us by the Holy Spirit. So let's 
pray. Let's ask for the Holy Spirit to come now on us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus told us, told the disciples to stay put until they were clothed with power from on high. And Lord, I ask that you would clothe us with the Holy Spirit for the 10 days of prayer, but actually for the work in our communities, that we, the church, would be light, that we would be salt, that we would be a blessing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we move on to our intercessions, where we pray for the church and for our world. We begin by asking God to bless these 10 days of intercession. Heavenly Father, please send the Holy Spirit to give us faith to believe that your power is available for us. Help us to understand that you bring us into the throne room in heaven to pray. Help us, Lord, to know that we have power to ask for this virus to be defeated. In Jesus, we pray now for a cure to be found, for a vaccine to be developed, for the virus to be overcome in our hospitals. We pray this in your name. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for people whose lives have been turned upside down at this time. Heavenly Father, we pray for people who are hungry. We ask you, Lord, to help the work of Storehouse and other organizations trying to help people who are in need. We pray for businesses who are struggling and for people who have financial worry. Lord, grant them peace and strength. We pray for homes where there are problems. We pray for women and children who are not safe in their homes. Lord, we ask that you would keep them safe. We pray for agencies that are trying to help those who are um, victims of domestic violence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all in our health service fighting the virus. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the frontline workers. We pray for doctors, nurses, and hospital staff. We remember the staff of care homes and all going into the homes of the elderly. Lord, we thank you for all the key workers who are meaning that we have food on our shelves. And we ask, Lord, your protection on all of them, that they would not catch this virus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick at this time. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are battling COVID-19. We ask your healing for them. We pray for people who have cancer and are waiting for treatment to start again or for surgery. Lord, we ask that treatment would start again soon, that operations would be able to be done. For even for people who are waiting for routine operations, we pray that soon that would start again. And so I'm going to pause for uh, some time for you to pray for people you know who need God's healing at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. peace. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. And the peace. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in Him and He in us. He opened wide His arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, He made the perfect sacrifice for sins. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of thanks and praise, and lift our voice to join the song of heaven forever praising you and saying, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen, amen, amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and feed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that nourished with such spiritual blessings we may set our hearts in the heavenly places where he now lives and reigns forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, our exalted King, pour on you his abundant gifts, make you faithful and strong to do His will, that you may reign with Him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Folks, good to be together in prayer today around the Lord's table, albeit at a distance but I hope that we can be united in prayer again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and so on, right through to Pentecost Sunday, our 10 days of prayer with the diocese and Bishop David begin here. Go in the peace of the risen Christ, alleluia, alleluia, thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.